Hi there, my name is Mark Lomberti and welcome in this new video. Today we are going to discover what to expect from Airflow 2.0 for which a lot of improvements have been made. So let's get started by the first one. Currently, your architecture in production may look like this one. Basically, you have multiple web servers running at the same time with a load balancer in front of them. Each time you want to access the Airflow UI, the request is sent to one of the web server instances by the load balancer. By doing this, if one web server goes down, you will still be able to access the Airflow UI. This is pretty easy to set up actually. From the database side, you may have a Postgres instance running with one master and multiple replicas. While the master node is used to process read-write requests, the replicas are used as read-only nodes to scale queries or as failovers so that if the master goes down, one of the replicas can take over it. In addition, a PG bouncer as well as a HA proxy can be set up to spread the workload among the nodes. Ok, so once we have this architecture, the web server and the database are highly available. But what about the scheduler? Currently, if the scheduler goes down, no tasks will be scheduled anymore and so it represents the single point of failure. Well, that's gonna end with Airflow 2.0. Indeed, you will be able to have multiple schedulers running at the same time, so that if one scheduler goes down, Airflow will still be able to schedule tasks. This will improve performances by reducing task-to-task -task schedule lag. The scalability, increasing task throughput is just a matter of adding a new scheduler. And the resiliency, since if one scheduler goes down, Airflow will continue to schedule tasks. It is based on an active-active model, so the scheduler will run in parallel. Finally, no new components are needed since the database with some mechanisms will be leveraged to allow this feature. Ok, next, a feature that is actually already implemented since 12.10.10 is DAG serializing. DAG serializing is the process of storing your DAGs directly in the database instead of having them as files in the folder DAGs. For example, I'm pretty sure right now that both of your web server and scheduler are passing the folder DAGs to process the DAGs in it. This is the default behavior with Airflow and actually you can change this by turning on the parameter store serialized DAGs from your configuration. By doing so, you will obtain the following process as shown from the right. The scheduler will pass the folder DAGs, process the DAGs, and start them into the database. Then the web server will read the DAGs from the database instead of the folder DAGs. This makes the web server stateless and your DAGs will be loaded on demand. Meaning, instead of processing all of them at an interval of time, only the scheduled DAGs from the Airflow UI will be loaded and processed. That's improved the performance of Airflow and reduced the lag of scheduling DAGs. This feature is already available but only for the web server at this time. You have to wait for the version 2.0 of Airflow for the scheduler to be able to do that. Next feature is DAG versioning. Let's say you have this DAG with three tasks, where the DAG was executed at the following execution date. Now let's say you want to add a new task to this DAG called parsing. Then you start new DAG runs and everything works well. The problem is, if you go back to the already triggered DAG run, you will get the task parsing without any state. Neither succeeded or failed or queued, nothing. That's an issue as it gives inconsistency in your DAG runs. Currently, to solve this, you have to version a given DAG by specifying the version in the DAG ID, like my underscore pipeline underscore v1, my underscore pipeline underscore v2, and so on. Well, that's where DAG versioning comes up, and so you won't have to do this tedious task anymore. Maintenance DAGs will be given to clear and keep consistent DAG runs through the versions of your DAGs, and you will be able to store those different versions in the Metastore. Another great improvement is related to the REST API. As you may know, the current API is still experimental and doesn't offer many possibilities. In Airflow 2.0, you will be happy to know that the API will be finally stable with much more routes to interact with connections, DAGs, and so on. 
The API will follow the Open API 3.0 specification to meet standard requirements and will be accessible through Swagger. Ok, now let's talk about scaling Apache Airflow. There is a chance that you are using the Kubernetes executor as it allows you to scale down to zero and avoid wasting resources unlike with the Celery executor. Basically, each time a task is executed, a pod is created. One task, one pod. But actually, there are two main drawbacks with the Kubernetes executor. First, this way of executing tasks and creating pods can quickly become very expensive in terms of resources and money. Indeed, in a very high-scale use case, you may end up with thousands of tasks running at the same time and so thousands of pods running as well. Another drawback is the fact that there is a non-zero startup time for running a task. The pod needs to be launched, then the Python interpreter, the dependencies have to be installed as well, and so on. Actually, that's where the Celery Executor, with something else, can solve those drawbacks, and this something is Keda. Keda stands for Kubernetes Event-Driven Autoscaler that you will install in your Kubernetes cluster, and it will scale the number of workers based on the number of running and queuing tasks in the database. That's a huge feature as workers can execute multiple tasks at once, unlike with a pod, where only one task is allowed to run. Basically, the number of workers depends on the following equation. 16 here is the default number of task instances that a worker will take. So in this example, the cluster will start with zero workers. And then, let's say we have 10 running tasks and 10 tasks in the queue. Well, 10 plus 10 divided by 16 with the sailing equals 2. Therefore, the cluster will scale up to 2 workers and then again scale down to 0. I hope you get the point here, this is huge in terms of scalability, cost effectiveness and resources. Before Keda, creating a queue was expensive. For example, let's say you wanted to use a number of CPUs for intensive tasks, you had to pre-allocate those resources and once the tasks were finished, the resources weren't released. With Keda, the queues are cheap at the workers and so the resources allocated can scale to zero while keeping the level of customization you want. Again, I strongly encourage you to try this configuration. Alright, the next update is related to the way of coding your DAGs. As you can see from the left, this is the traditional way of creating your DAGs. We implement the tasks, here get cat pictures and save cats. Then we instantiate an operator, in this case two Python operators with their task IDs, Python callable functions, parameters and so on. Finally, we define the dependencies at the bottom of the DAG. Ok, this is a lot of code. The new approach of writing your DAGs is much simpler. On the right, this is the same DAG but in a functional manner. Pretty amazing, isn't it? With functional DAGs, you will use decorators like task, as shown above the functions, and so no need to specify the operator anymore. Also, the dependencies are implicitly set by putting the task get underscore task as parameter of the Python function save underscore cats in this example. Not only we are defining the dependencies between tasks, but we are also specifying how the data should be processed between the tasks. To sum up, in functional DAGs, functions are automatically converted as Airflow tasks by using decorators, and the way of writing your DAGs is also much easier and simplified. Finally, a very cool feature is the pluggable XCOM storage engine. Instead of using XCOMs to store data in the database of Airflow, you will be able to change this storage engine by, no by another one such as S3 or GCS without having to add a lot of code and repeat yourself in your DAGs. Alright, as you can see, there are a lot of major features that will bring Airflow at another step and I'm really excited about this. Now let me point out some smaller changes. First, you won't be able to create multiple connections with the same connection ID. The connection IDs will have to be unique. Python 2.7 won't be supported anymore and so make the update and start using at least Python 3.5. As you may know or not, Airflow brings two user interfaces and so only the world-based user interface will be kept. Basically, the default UI won't be accessible anymore. 
to finish, the path of the operators has changed. Now there is a provider module, so you may get warnings at the update of Airflow. Don't worry, the team is working on making the upgrade really smooth and some packages will be released to ensure the back portability. But don't forget that upgrading to a major version implies breaking changes. Alright, that's it about Airflow 2.0, I hope you enjoyed the video. I would like to give a huge thanks to the team and people working on this beautiful project, I really believe in it. And if you want to watch the webinar, I strongly encourage you to do it, go check the link in the description below. If you want to learn more about Airflow, please check my courses and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a good day and see you in the next video.